Overflowing, they know they have lost. And Rusty Wallace is turning over. Rusty Wallace, 20 feet in the air, spinning, crashing. Dale Jarrett's going to win the Daytona 500. The Daytona 500 belongs to Franklin, Tennessee's Darrell Waldron. Dale Earnhardt finally is a champion of the Daytona 500. Daytona 500. Oh my God! Are you kidding? I was so nervous the whole the whole race, pretty much. And uh, man, it, it, Tab, my spotter, crew chief Todd, all the guys I've seen, they worked so hard over the off season. This is our weakest racetrack, so Super Speedways. We were terrible at them last year. We worked really hard, and hard work equals results every time. And uh, I couldn't be more proud. Shell, Penzo, Coca-Cola, uh, Ford, everyone that helps us out. Uh, with this thing, unbelievable! They towed a 500, Hall, oh. and then it boils down to a late restart. What was going through your mind? Everything. Um, I was trying to stay relaxed. That was the hardest part. You get a red flag, and they give you the opportunity to think of everything, you know. And uh, Clint Boyer was a, the best pusher out there today, and uh, he was able to uh, line up there at the end. We were able to push out ahead, and then uh, you know saw him crashing in the mirror. And I think even if we got to the check, I still felt pretty good about it. Just uh, what an awesome! I can't believe I'm still in like complete awe. I don't, I don't even know what to say right now. You came to this team to find a new home, and you did. By the way, your dad is stuck outside the gate across the track. He can't cross over. But <laughs> Roger Penske kept talking to you on the radio, kept telling you, pumping you up. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because how the whole team gets really quiet though. When you're about to win the Daytona 500, the yeah, red flag was just kind of quiet. We knew what we had to do. We had a really fast car. Um, just, you know, I had to make the right moves and not get snookered on the start and do something to make a mistake. And uh, I can't believe it. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't even know what I'm supposed to be saying right now. This is uh, this doesn't happen very often. You get one shot at this. It's such a build-up the whole weekend uh, to the Daytona 500, all the, all the qualifying races and all the drama you go through. And then to, uh, you know, be here at the end and have your car sitting out in the museum and whatever else comes along with winning this race. Uh, wow. Welcome to NASCAST 500, the only NASCAR podcast that's actually pissed that Kurt Busch got suspended. Thanks a lot, NASCAR. Uh, filling in for Elizabeth Moxley, I'm your host, Adam Hammond. I'm with my good buddy. Phil Matthews. Hey, what's going on, Phil? Uh, not much, man. Just glad Pizza Face won instead of Andrew. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy that a Penske car won because Penske's my favorite team, but I, I, I would have picked Brad, not Logano, but we know what the Brad blow-up situation. Uh, the 500 really wasn't that good of a race, to be honest. I mean, I've seen better Daytona 500s. The last great Daytona 500, I think, was probably 2011. We haven't really seen a, a great one since then. Yeah, I mean, for me personally, I mean, great Daytona 500. It's hard to, I mean, you talk from my my favorite drivers won way back in the day, you know, like 91, 92, Ernie Irvin and Davey Allison. For me, a great Daytona 500 is the one that keeps me entertained the whole way. I was sitting there watching bowling because my favorite bowler, Parker Bone the third, was on the telecast, and he ended up winning. And he's from Jersey, too. So I was watching that. I was watching golf. So the logic that you're going to tell me that this Daytona 500 was good when I was so, when it was easy enough for me to go and change the channel, it definitely sucked. Um, 2011, when Trevor won with the tandems, I because I'm a fan of the tandems, uh, anybody who really wanted to see like people in control of their own destiny uh, on on these stupid restrictor play tracks, uh, the, the, the tandems were much better than what we have now, which is basically if you get out front, you somehow now or another get a huge run. You get out front, you just block everybody and just and and break drafts, and it's just awful. Uh, you look at the the results, and basically four drivers led all but uh, what 
17 laps, about 16 laps of the race. 187 of the 203 laps were led by four drivers, led by Cole Sitter, and in his last 500, Jeff Gordon, uh, De Pizza Face, uh, June Bug, and uh, Johnson. They led basically the entire event. So if you love Hendrick Motors, if you love Hendrick Motorsports, like Rage the Creator does, or that Sucardia guy um, on our page, then you probably are blowing your load. But if you didn't like, if you don't like Hendrick Motorsports or GM in general, you're going to be pissed. Like me, also, when your favorite driver is Tony Stewart, and he wrecks 40 laps into the race, you have no reason to give a fuck anymore, and I couldn't get drunk because I had to do something later that night, or else I really would have gotten wasted, but uh, it was a bad Daytona 500, uh, no matter what those asshole announcers say. Uh, Pizza Face, he's a goofy-looking guy. I'll give Penske credit. He hires goofy-looking guy because I can drive. Uh, he, he's, he's very... He's very naive, to say the least. He's 24 years old. He's pretty dumb, but, you know, he can drive a race car, so he's in the chase now for whatever that's worth. Bullshit, but uh, I'm glad a Ford won something that went on this weekend, something that usually doesn't happen at Daytona is Ford's winning, and it actually went on all three days. Yeah, I mean, I was surprised uh, for the first two races. The third race, which was the 500, I was really um, disenchanted with it. I mean, with five to go, I figured Johnson was going to pull some bullshit move, and bump Logano out of the way and win it because he's a piece of shit, because he likes to hog the track like he did at the duels on Thursday, so I honestly I don't understand why nobody wanted to pass him. I mean, there was opportunities where people could pass, but and another thing that I really got pissed at was the fact that no, there was hardly anybody was pushing Johnson, and yet he could still manage to get out in front and keep the lead while others had to fight their asses off to get back to the front. I mean, it, it, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't be surprised, though. I mean, it is a hinder car, so that that fucking boss hog probably made the car special, so they would uh, they would they would be able to keep the lead without not having to do anything. Yeah, exactly. Well, any event. Well, let's start with the uh, the actual points race on Friday, which was the next day, Era Energy Resources 250 at Daytona, the truck race. Honestly, it was a great, it was a good race for the trucks. I mean, it was a better truck race than last year when, uh, when Cryo won, so it was it was good. Uh, we had a first-time winner with uh, Tyler Reddick for Brad's team, so to see a first-time winner for Ford, and actually Ford getting the win at Daytona in the trucks hasn't happened since 2006 when Mark Martin won. So to see Tyler Tyler Reddick get it done with uh, one of my guys in the trucks, Eric Jones, coming home second. So it was a it was a good truck race for you know. Besides the fact that everyone wrecked and we had a uh, we had to deal with uh, MW55 being a dipshit like normal, but at least it, at least uh, it was my joy uh, hosting it, not fucking Adam Alexander. Yeah, because. That's the thing, uh, you know, for they gave a shout out to Steve Burns on Sunday's telecast, uh, uh, the thoughts and prayers. I mean, he's battling and he's showing he's a true warrior uh, battling his cancer. And he's the guy who's supposed to be announcing the truck races and everybody's filling his seat. And they had Mike Joy announcing last week. I don't know who's going to announce this week, but uh, I think Brian Till, the sports car announcer, uh, but, you know, at least Mike Joy, when his senility isn't kicking in, is uh, still good enough. Uh, with Phil Parsons, he kind of was more comfortable than what he is with the bullshit artists that he has to sit with on Sunday. Uh, Adam Alexander is the absolute biggest piece of trash. One of the biggest pieces of trash in announcing. He's like the Joe Buck of, of motorsports, which isn't a very nice con. Uh, it isn't very nice, but Joe Buck's such a goober, it's unbelievable. But it's typical Fox. They hire these jackasses that can't announce or can't provide news properly or whatever. They just do that and, and they just put out lies and bullshit. So, I mean, getting back to the race, though, Reddick, 
I, I had a conversation with my buddy Randy about who are guys that could be standouts for the season. I kind of said Reddick. And I said Reddick, and then he's like, yeah, you know, he's not really that good. He hasn't, and, and I thought about it. I was like, oh, you know, that might be true. But I thought about it more recently, especially now that he's a first-time winner. He was never really the main guy at BKR. You know, you had Blaney there. When the 19 runs outside of Reddick, they, they were running the top guys and putting a little more effort. Obviously, Brad wants to make sure he puts the best foot forward no matter what. But Reddick was learning, too. Uh, this is his second year into the series, first full year. He's the main guy on the team. Austin Terrio and him. Terrio is one of the best young talents there is in the, in the sport right now. They work together. Once all the wrecking happened, they were able to uh, get together and, and make something happen. And unfortunately for Terrio, he got hung out uh, late to finish fourth. But Eric Jones, who my pick for the championship, uh, he was an outside pick to take over a certain seat that we'll mention later on. But Jones, he's going to be in another seat that we'll mention later on this weekend and probably for the foreseeable the future. But Jones is a favorite for the title. Reddick, who's an outside guy, they both gain on gain some points on two time defending champion and California's own Matt Crafton. And uh, Johnny Sauter, who's another favorite for the uh, Chuck Series crown. Uh, the the one major guy that got screwed in the whole process uh, was Timothy Peters when he got taken out early on in, in that like for lap 40 something wreck with Ben Kennedy and all that big wreck in turn three. Uh, that one really got uh, uh, Timothy Peters and that 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 up his whole entire day and he's going to have to come from behind again this year if he wants to get his first truck done. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a lot better knowing that there weren't many uh, cup guys worth contending for in the race, so it actually made it watchable. Uh, the finishing order, we got Reddick getting his first win. We got Jones with uh, his first full-time ride for Kyle coming on second. Uh, Scott Lagasty was probably the uh, best uh, finish I've seen in an underdog situation for quite a long time. Third, uh, Austin Terrio driving for Brad in fourth, started fourth. I figured it was going to be a BKR 1-2. Uh, Ray Black, don't even know who the fuck that guy is. Uh, Gillowin finished sixth. Uh, really wouldn't expect him to be in a truck and actually finish well, but oh well. Uh, Silas, Brian Silas, seventh after his hood came off, finished seventh, so that was pretty surprising. Uh, Matt Craft in eighth, uh, one of two titles in a row, maybe going for three. I don't think he's good, though. Uh, Suarez actually having a good finish outside of the whole weekend in the ninth and then uh, Sauter 10th. So, realistically, it wasn't a bad truck race, and it was certainly better knowing that there weren't any cup guys in there, but it wasn't the best truck race I've seen in Daytona. Yeah, there's I mean, if you go back to the beginning of the truck races at Daytona, you know, those were great races because they were basically unrestricted. The, the trucks actually were up off the ground, so you actually had to drive them really hard. And, you know, like you had to actually drive, you had to drive them. Uh, now they're all stuck to the ground and then uh, easier to drive, relatively speaking, of course. But, uh, uh, this race wasn't that great, but not having cup participation actually helped with the overall uh, uh, result because they actually had to talk about some of these young guys and ladies or whatever in, in the race. Yeah, well, well, the truck race was all right, but uh, the Xfinity was not that bad. Uh, I, I thought the Xfinity race actually had some luster, uh, you know, had at least something, so... We'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, we had a first-time winner with Ryan Reed with Roush Fenway. Uh, I, the last time Roush won at Daytona in, Nation, in Xfinity, I keep saying Nation when it's kind of hard not to say it. Uh, I don't even remember the last time Roush won in Daytona. Oh, wait, they never did. I forgot. Uh, so Reed did. He made history. Um, he made history 
with uh, becoming the first uh, first time winner for the uh, for X, the under the Xfinity banner, and then, and then also becoming the first driver to win for Roush at Daytona the new plate. So good on Reed for for finishing, and then his teammate Chris Buescher won. So we'll just uh, well, it, it was good. It was a good race. Yeah, I mean, definitely it was a little more wide open than the uh, other two races. More leaders, a little more balanced in terms of who could get out front. There was a little more ability to maneuver. Uh, other than uh, Rowdy uh, leading the most laps, Daryl Wallace led a bunch of laps in his debut for Roush. So all three Roush guys did really well on Saturday. It could have been even better for Bubba if he didn't get involved in one of those in the late wreck. He would have probably been in great shape to do something, but good but good on Ryan Reed of type one diabetes. He's uh, he's to go and make it there. He had a terrible year last year as a rookie, uh, but he he's learned and he got that push from uh, from Busher to get past Brad Keselowski after Larson and Chastain went into the woods, and uh, that's a great story for the series. We'll see if they actually give him the proper coverage. Chris Busher, Ty Dillon, or two regulars. They gained some ground on defending series champion uh, Chase Elliott uh, in, in the initial. I mean, obviously, it's a first race, so he could recover, but he's already given up. You're looking at uh, he's down 31 points to Ryan Reed to start the season. He's down uh, some like 37 uh, you know, 27 points to Chris Bush or so. It's that'll be a it'll be in a tough road to hold initially, but obviously things will balance out with all these races and. Good for Ryan Reed. Good for Chris Buescher. Great weekend for Ford. Great week for or, or day for Ford on Saturday. Uh, they had what is it? If you look at uh, the nine cars on the lead lap. Four of them were Fords. Three of the top five. Keselowski had a chance to win. The Cup and her Loper. Dylan was what well, Austin Dylan qualified on poles. So the Dylan brothers qualified on both poles, but didn't convert. Um, Talk about Bubba Wallace, all sorts of Ford. I mean, the race was interesting. You give props to Ross Chastain, David Starr for their performances, staying on the lead lap. Dakota Armstrong uh, was a lap down in 11. Uh, Mike Wallace, minus running into the back of Austin Dillon randomly under a red flag, uh, actually got a 13th place finish. Clemens got a top 15. Uh, Mario Gosselin, who's actually done time in jail, uh, got a 15th place finish. So, I mean, there's some random guys or some wrecking, not as much wrecking as uh, the truck race, but there was wrecks and uh, some random guys per plate racing itself. There were guys that wrecked and uh, it adjusted the finishing order. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the last few years, the uh, Xfinity races have just been mad. Last year was a war fest, you know, and, uh, and a good thing about the finish from last year, Cup Driver didn't win, so I guess we're keeping the uh, in the tradition of the Cup Drivers not winning, so we had a good weekend with uh, Reed getting the win, Busher second, uh, the Silver Spoon Brothers third and fourth, Ty third, Austin fourth, uh, Brad came home fifth, uh, almost had the win, but lost on the last lap. David Starr probably Probably the biggest uh, upset in finishing order for the uh, Xfinity, other than the winner Ryan Reed. Um, Almarola drive the 98, finished seventh. Uh, Larson, great one for him. I figured that he would have been a, a contender if he wouldn't have been uh, so so bad at the end with the little spin. Ross Chastain, I didn't even figure he'd even finish in the top ten. So good on him. And then uh, Junior tenth. So it was an all right uh, Xfinity race for the first Xfinity banner. So we'll we'll it, we'll see how it gets later on down the line. But it was a pretty good opener. Yeah, I agree with that. 
Yeah, well, let's move on to the quote unquote biggest race of the year, which is the Daytona 500. Uh, everyone, every media outlet, Fox, NBC, uh, J Ski, uh, YouTube, every other place that you can think of is boasting about the Daytona 500 to no end, about how great it's going to be. And it turns out to be one of the worst Daytona 500s in recent memory, at least in my opinion. Uh, the finish really was it was a weak finish. We really didn't get to see an underdog win, which would have been cool. We didn't even get to see them race back to the cost, back to the race, to the, to the checkered, which NASCAR should have let them do, like they did in, on uh, Saturday, uh, but of course they did. They wanted to. They wanted to see the race, the biggest race of the year, end under caution. So I don't understand that. But I'm, I'm not mad at Logano that one, even though I can't stand the punk. But I'm glad it was him in, in a Penske Ford and not Johnson in the, in the 48. Because since that, since Kyle with the issue with Kyle Busch, I'm, I'm just glad that it uh, that it turned out to be someone that I. If you got to look between the less the two lesser of the two evils, I'd rather pick uh, Pete the face over fix back any day. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's a lesser of two evils result because I don't really care. I don't I don't hate Joey Logano. I don't really care. I mean, he's a solid, he's become a really solid driver. And in terms of what Mark Martin said, he's the best thing since sliced bread. He's actually starting to really live up to that. He just needed to leave Gibbs to do it. Uh, I mean, he was one of the dominant cars all day, so the logic that he was there and actually pulled it off is not all that surprising. He was the only non-Hendrick car because it was a Hendrick benefit, uh, as we mentioned before. It's like I wasn't lying because when they were leading, it usually is boring as hell and not great. And then you add the horrible announcing and, and, and analysis from all the other idiots they have on there. and. It was one of the crackier Daytona 500s in recent memory. Uh, well, anything that involves the Hendrick car winning usually is really bad. Uh, I mean, Trevor Bain winning was good. Uh, Jamie Mack, because of the story and his emotion, you know, Kenseth, you know, winning. I, the second time was boring. The first time was like, oh, it's all right, rain short and whatever is okay. The 2008 Daytona 500 would piss me off till the end of time. But uh, the, the thing is, Daytona 500 wasn't that good. And then if your driver is like somebody like Tony Stewart, like me, or Brad Keselowski, then you're going to be really pissed because neither of them had good fortune on Sunday. I mean, Tony got wrecked 40 laps into the race, so it was like a complete cluster F, and uh, I wasn't even having it. I was rather, I would have rather I watch PBA Tour or, or golf, and I did because I didn't want to watch that nonsense. And uh, if it's a good race, I would be able to tune it away. I would have to watch it the whole time and I mean Fox doesn't help with their horrible coverage either but it is what it is we're on to Atlanta and two major uh, people that are missing yeah well Daytona it, they, this is usually how the Daytona 500 works for me they usually like to build you up and say oh my god it's the first points race of the season get pumped and then when you get there it's just boring and same thing happened last year but of course um, all the HMS fans were pissing their pants when Junior won so I mean what it, 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 it is what it is so we'll just head on to Atlanta hopefully we'll actually see a good finish uh, let's get down to the running order uh, Logano won the race good run on him uh, even though I can't stand the pump uh, Harvick finished second pretty sure that if uh, he if the caution hadn't flown he would have won uh, Gunier coming on third where he started so that's all good um, Hamlin fourth for first good run for the Gibbs guys uh, fixed pack coming on fifth after uh, leading the, mostly the rest of the laps and then getting uh, trolled at the end so uh, yeah fuck you Johnson you don't, you don't deserve a win uh, Mears coming on sixth that's pretty surprising not because Casey Mears is restricted play tracks you, you don't really expect much um, then you got Boyer seventh who really could have had a shot to 
win, but he just kind of got shuffled late. Uh, Truex, great run for him. Great, great, great speed weeks in general for Phillips for World Motor Blazing. For the fact that Truex nearly won the shootout, nearly won one of the duels. If he would have won the Daytona 500, they probably would have made the weekend a lot better. Uh, Candy Cane, ninth, and then that Bug Eye Dummy, 10th. So it, it was. Um, yeah, honestly, if I compare 2015 to 2013, it's it's 2015 is a way better race, but uh, I haven't seen a great Daytona 500 since 2011. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I'm I'm a fan of the I was a fan of the tandems, and it allowed people to race and actually get away from others and make some things happen. You're able to pass. There's a lot of passes for the lead instead of people just going and dropping anchor and not being able to be passed. I mean, Trevor being the story, you'll never be able to beat. That's one of those stories I'll never be able to be beat in, in the history of the Daytona 500. And actually, Trevor Bain had a fast car. He got wrecked late in the race, but he had a fast car on Sunday. Like, he was an outside shot. Uh, our boy, and Richard, went and got, got uh, taken out late as well. And he had had a fast car all during speed weeks, but he couldn't close the deal, but that's that's not shocking. So. Yeah, well, glad Richard wrecked, and um, I actually said that when he wrecked. Oh, Richard! <laughs> so, anyway, um, of course, the biggest stories besides the 500 was the uh, issues with the Bush brothers. Uh, if you haven't heard by now, you're probably living under a fucking rock and don't have a computer or a phone. So if, if you haven't, we'll, we'll uh, let you tune in. Um, well, Kurt Busch basically has been suspended uh, indefinitely. We'll just say suspended in quotes because it's a little bullshit. Uh, yeah. With the issue with Pocket Commando, uh, Patricia Driscoll, and their little issue that has been going on since September with uh, the the assumption, quote unquote, that Kurt bashed her head against the wall and took him to court for domestic violence. One and basically got what she wanted which was to destroy Kurt Busch, which she did. Uh, and uh, ooh, I hate that bitch to no end. And then the second piece of news with the Bush brothers, Kyle, whom nobody, I, I, I've never really met anybody that actually genuinely likes Kyle Busch. But in any event, he broke his leg in the uh, Xfinity race while he wrecked. And although that I can't stand the dickhead, I'm, uh, it sucks that he broke his leg, and I never really want to wish injuries on another driver. So uh, hope Kyle gets better soon. But it, in any event, I'm just, uh, it's just been a terrible weekend for the, actually a terrible month for the Bush Brothers. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Kurt's um, life and career, I mean, his choices of women are are going to be legendary because they're going to be the end of them. Uh, Pocket Commando, the latest in the line of women that have basically destroyed his life. I mean, I don't condone violence against women, right? That's, I'm going to put it out there. I, don't, I shouldn't have to qualify it, but I don't condone violence against women. But at the end of the day, this pocket commando has been in relationships with three men uh, in, in some sort of profile. And each one of those re relationships have went to court for an accusation of domestic violence. So the logic that, you know, it's only the guys that are involved in the process, she's not working with a full deck of cards to begin with. Um, was she asking for it? I don't know what happened. It's a he said, she said. And the idiot judge who ruled in family court in favor of pocket commando is like on the assumption that he might have. You know, like I, I don't have the exact language, but when you consider the kind of language you're using to describe the charge, it's dubious at best to go and suspend somebody on... Uh, uh, and like an assumption, but yeah, 
the BZF wants to go and make an example out of Kurt, and that's what he's doing, and Pocket Commando's cutting him a check to do so. And so and all in all, it's just a, a typical run-of-the-mill BZF driving the sport to the ground and uh, destroying a guy's career who actually is a champion and had, had re- reformed himself minus his choice in women. Um, it's just a shame, really. I don't see what what uh, uh, sign there's going to be of him coming back and driving a cup car. I think he'll probably either drive an Indy car or a pro stock car. But, uh, in Kyle's case, you know, when you go off the racetrack at 80 miles an hour uh, and hit a wall straight on, uh, it's not going to be good news no matter what. Uh, compound fracture of the right leg, broken left ankle and foot, I believe. So he really jacked himself up in that race. And Joe Gibbs is probably sitting there cursing the world while well, he can't. He's a freaking religious protection. He's probably saying, God, that's, I know there's a thing about karma, but really at this place, you know, at this time when Kyle was probably in a mindset that was pretty good, considering his wife's having their first child and all this and now he's going to be sat up in the freaking recovery for months and it's it's a brutal a brutal burn for him but I, I figured at some point his luck was going to run out with all these truck and, and Xfinity races he insists on running that you know something is going to eventually happen that adversely affected him and adversely affected his sponsor and team and it shows the selfishness by which Kurt Busch, I mean Kyle Busch, how selfish he really is because he sacrificed himself and now he won't win the cup title, he won't win the Xfinity title, owner's title. In the end, it's an all-losing battle because he needs to drive these races. I mean, it's bad. I feel bad for the guy and hope for a speedy recovery, but he just screwed himself for no reason. Yeah, it's kind of karma catching up with him. I mean, he's been running Xfinity and trucks while doing Cup since he's been with Gibbs longer than he did when he was with Hendricks. So uh, eventually something was going to keep him uh, doing less and less races. And uh, maybe this is a sign that maybe he needs to give up on Xfinity and and, and just focus on Cup, something he should have been doing since, since 2008. But, of course, Kyle likes to win and he's the king of the minors. So, yeah. I mean, that's just that's just typical Kyle. I mean, he, he would rather break his leg doing something that he shouldn't even be doing in the first place rather than competing for a bigger and better title, which is the Sprint Cup title plus Sprint Cup races. But, eh, it's Kyle Busch. Not really surprised. Yeah, exactly. Well, speaking of the Bush brothers with the but the issues that they've experienced, neither of them will race in Atlanta. And it's probably the first time since 2000, I think 2001, that the Bush brother of any kind was at Atlanta. And with that, we have their replacement drivers. Uh, Regan Smith is going to be again in the 41. And uh, the 18, which was announced today that uh, although the, most people believed it was Eric Jones, it's going to be David Reagan, surprisingly, in the 18 in Atlanta. So it's going to be uh, interesting to see how these two different drivers drive for two different teams, basically the same team uh, for Bush Brothers. So we'll see how they we'll see how they run it in there. Yeah, I mean for. Regan Smith, he's he's kind of a mid-range guy. He's a nice guy, upstate uh, New York guy. He's a mid-range driver in Cup. He is his place is Xfinity. You know, he's a top five, top ten contender. Uh, his he's in the Sam Hornish kind of you know mid-range mold, fifteenth uh, place, like twenty third kind of you know like. He's he's gonna get the car to the end of the race. He's gonna give you a chance to get a decent finish. That's what Regan Smith is there for. The way Stuart Haas Racing is handling uh, the hire, it's a race to race kind of thing. It's entirely possible there might be somebody else in the car. I don't know. It was uh, keeping up with the uh, NASCAR media, the Facebook page, and I was saying, you know, I don't know if it was that one or race fans only, one of them, but 
Like they're trying to hold out for the big man, big name. I mean, Gene Haas is preoccupied with his F1 program and getting that one off the ground. But I also know that losing the driver he chose. Uh, he wants to have a big name, and I figure Chase would get that opportunity because, uh, yeah, they're going to give him five cup starts, but I, I think probably by after Martinsville, they're probably going to go and say, hey, if Kurt isn't back by then, then they'll probably give uh, Chase an opportunity in that car. And, with Reagan, it's a home race this weekend at Atlanta. Solid, young, spectacular driver as well. Mid-range guy. He he drove for Roush for a few years. They basically now have Roush circa 2010 minus uh, Bug Eye Dummy. Uh, it's it's an all right hire. I think they could have went and made a real progressive hire and got like a Michael McDowell or somebody that has never really gotten an opportunity and went from there. But to, to each his own. They're both way richer than I am, so they know what they're doing. We'll see what happens with those two. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how everything goes in Atlanta with the new season, the new everything. Um, personally, though, I'm, I'm, I'm more excited for Atlanta than I was for Daytona, but that's not really surprising considering how lame Daytona's been the last few years. Yeah, I mean, Atlanta, they're going back to a race in the winter uh, again. They've been that they had used to have both races in basically the, the – it was fall in for the last race of the year, but, you know, the the for the spring – what they call the spring race really was in winter. So going back because of locality, because of uh, access for the teams is, is good. Uh, I think it will be solid racing. Curious to see – the double header on Saturday, the trucks and Xfinity will have a double header, which is an idea they probably should implement more often if they're going to have these crappy schedules for both series to have the double header so you get two races on one ticket. Uh, Cup Series is going to debut the new motor package and aerodynamic tweaks and so 500 miles at Atlanta is always tough so we'll see what happens with that and after Ford blew up two, two motors on Sunday you wonder how they'll be uh, tuning them for this weekend and I'm not sure what the weather is but uh, in general it's I love Atlanta. It's one of my favorite tracks. Even though SMI is trying to kill it, uh, it's a really good racetrack. You can race from top to bottom, and you actually have to drive to get through around there. So that's that's why I'm looking forward to Atlanta this weekend. So we'll see. Me personally, I, I would like to see them go back to the original schedule from the 90s, have Richmond be the second race, and bring back North Wilkesboro and all these other great racetracks, and get rid of all the shitty ones like Kentucky and Kansas. But since it's Bruton Smith and BZF, yeah, that's, that's going to be a chance in hell of that happening. Yeah, we're stuck with a bunch of crappy cookie-cutter tracks instead of uh, short tracks where you can actually race, beat and bang, put on some real entertainment. So, I mean, I'm not going to go and sweat something that I have no control over. And uh, unfortunately, that's part one of the many reasons why the sport is going down the toilet is this dictatorship that BZF has on on uh, the BZF and Bruins with that on all these tracks. And it, it puts on a terrible most of them put on terrible shows. Uh, Atlanta's the exception because it just destroys tires. So, yeah, you can make passes, but you're also going to have to go and finish the job. You know, and so Atlanta provides good racing. We should see a good weekend of action. Yeah, I'm 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 excited to see how it goes. But and, well, we'll see. Uh, speaking of replacement drivers, um, as most people know, Brian Vickers not going to be in the 55 till uh, till next week in Vegas. Which unfortunately, I'm not going to. I was going to go, but man, just shit happened at the last minute. In any event, uh, 
MW55 was in the Daytona 500 and didn't do nothing, surprisingly. And um, the guy who's going to be at the 55 this week is Brett Moffitt. I mean, I heard of him, and he raced in the 66 once, I think, last year. But, um, you know, they could have picked better drivers for, for that issue. They could have picked someone worth worth uh, replacing, replacing Vickers. But in any event, it's, as long as it's uh, somebody who knows how to drive, he's probably a ton of a better driver than MW55. Yeah, I mean, that's MW55 having a bad day to 500. He basically parked it in the duel uh, uh, and gave Pukamani a chance to make the show. And uh, in the race itself, he wasn't a factor, and that's great because that's one less prior person that uh, DW can go slobber on. Yeah, well, I think Moffitt will. Yeah, I mean, he, he can, I think he could be a talent if they just give him some time. But, I mean, I haven't really seen this kid do anything in Xfinity or Trucks to make me believe he can actually be a cup driver. But, eh, who knows? Yeah, I mean, with Moffitt, uh, he's, he's a young gun. Uh, but as per the other young guns that are driven for Michael Waltrip, they either end up uh, fired or losing their job because of some dubious pretense. Uh, it's Moffitt, I think, will do better than what he did at times last year. He had a year to learn. Basically, I think he should be able to produce something, produce a decent finish, produce a better finish than MW55 on Sunday. So. Well, and speaking of that dickhead who runs NASCAR, uh, technically, Mr. BZF, um, I'm on JSQ right now, and it's an article saying, Brands, safety, performance, and our NASCAR hallmarks. Let's listen to this shit. On Monday, NASCAR chairman and CEO Brian France explained the secret to the sport's success in creating a level playing field and expressed the importance of safety. He also told Sirius XM Radio that Joey Logano leads a group of young drivers coming up in the sport. Everybody gets an opportunity on equal footing to compete, and that's a very hard task for us because we have 43 teams, three manufacturers, and a lot of smart people trying to game any rules package that we put forward, Fran said. To get an advantage, that's what they do. That's what they should do. When we're able to boil all through that and make sure that everybody is on equal footing, that's when we win. And if we do that in a safe way, then we really win. France addressed the caution flag that ended the Great American Race with the multi-car wreck on the backstretch at the World Center of Racing. We obviously err on the side for safety. Fran said of the yellow flag that ended the race after the field received the white flag on the first attempt at a Green white checkered finish. That's of course what we're that's of course what we're gonna do in this case. NASCAR officials believed that they couldn't clear it off and it was just too dramatic. We would have loved to have finished it perfectly under green, but it wasn't the case. I don't really think it would have changed anything in this case. Joey Logano had broken out and established himself. It also addressed it, it also would have been very difficult to overcome him in any caught in any situation. France also addressed Kyle Bush's crash in San Francisco Xfinity Series race and Daytona International. Speedway president Joey Chitwood the third pledge to bring the track with safer barriers. Joey Chitwood said it fast that, hey, look, if that's unacceptable. Fran said that I'm not having a safer barrier on the front stretch where Bush crashed. We're going to own that and move forward. That's how we're wired. That's a cornerstone of what we do. Sadly, safety and performance are the hallmarks of NASCAR. He added, if we don't get safety right, then nothing else really matters. Fuck you, you fat piece of shit. Why don't you go, why don't you go snort coke and go get some boogers or something? That's what you're good at. Yeah, I mean, uh, BZF doesn't know what the hell's going on. I mean, it took Kyle Busch hitting a wall at 80 miles an hour for some of these people to wake up and understand that there's a bigger problem than safety. Uh, see, you know, some of the rodents and other things. Uh, it's like a rodent that what he is, you know? He's, he's just a piece of trash, BZF. And it's it, all these rule, rules and talking about adjusting format and things of that nature. It's just, it's, it's insane to me how 
the sport. And then, you know, Joey Chitwood goes and says, oh, yeah, now we're going to react. Like, the problem with NASCAR is they take credit for things, even though they had nothing to do with them, like the safer barrier. It was an Indianapolis thing first, long before NASCAR got to it. It took so many people dying. A basilar skull fracture is about to happen. You know, the Hans device is, is another thing. Like, safety, it's not about, oh, safety is paramount, there's that anything. Safety is paramount for the drivers and teams, and NASCAR doesn't care. And it's cutting corners and doing stuff that is just not right for kids or just not right for for anybody. You know, it's I, I really don't I, I really don't care what BZF said and you know the people that are involved in it. It's, the, the the point is you should be they, these people should uh, offer you know offer better options in terms of safety. They should also you know have better guidelines for for a lot of major aspects of the racing. And, I mean, BZF doesn't know what's going on. The fact you showed the Daytona 500 is a minor miracle anyway. So, it's, you know, he can go fuck himself. In the, YouTube. the thing I can't really stand with him is that he thinks he's help, helping NASCAR, making it better, but he's probably so fucking out of his mind that he doesn't know what he's talking about or even thinking about. He just says what he says because, I mean, he, he looks like someone who lost his mind a long time ago, so. Not really surprising. Yeah, that's what happens when you get divorced. Yeah, not to mention when you're when you're when you're when you're in a famous family like the Francis, you gotta have enough money to blow on hookers and cocaine. So, in any event, uh, we're gonna pass down to something that's actually good for the sport uh, and for a driver that's really respected to everybody. I've never really met anybody that didn't respect this guy, uh, Richard Petty. Uh, he's being inducted to the Speedway Lane Hall of Fame. Uh, uh, this is on J-Ski. Uh, Richard Petty, a seven-time NASCAR champion, winner of over 200 career races, and a 2010 NASCAR Hall of Fame inductee, continues to collect numerous accolades for a legendary career behind the wheel of a stock car that began nearly 60 years ago. Petty will be inducted into the city of Hampton, Georgia, Speedway Lane Hall of Fame in a ceremony at 6 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday, Thursday, February 26th. No, that's not that's just tomorrow. Uh, as, the, as the home city of Atlanta Motor Speedway honors the racing legend to kick off its four-day 2015 NASCAR weekend, established in 2013. Hampton Speedway Lane Hall of Fame honors influential drivers with strong ties to Georgia and Atlanta Motor Speedway. Its current members include Fayetteville, Georgia's Rex White and Dawsonville, Georgia's Bill Elliott, both 2014 NASCAR Hall of Fame inductees. Special speakers at the ceremony will include Patty Hampton Mayor Steve Hutchison and Atlanta Motor Speedway President Ed Clark. Additionally, a special tribute will honor the late Captain Kurt Emery, longtime local Atlanta traffic reporter, a passion civic activist, and icon in the Motor Express Press community. So, I mean, it, it's great. I mean, Richard Petty's one of the greatest of all time, if not the greatest of all time. Uh, so for him to continue his legendary status, even though he's been at a NASCAR racing for 22 years, it's, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a thing. We'll see what happens this weekend with... Uh, the racing and see what we get out of some of these major stories that goes on but the, the I'm, I'm curious as to minus the safety aspect and them not really caring I'm, I'm surprised I want to see what the cup cars drive like on a very abrasive surface with a lot less horsepower if tire conservation plays a bigger role versus you know uh, uh, wrecking or other things because of some of these things you have to click off or whatever it's I, I I'm just done with sort of the bullshit that BZF does because it, it's gotten old and it's getting older and eventually it's gonna wear really thin yeah I mean I don't understand how a lot of people aren't on BZF's case I mean how the people that watch NASCAR nowadays really don't even question Brian Francis' bullshit. They just go with it. I mean, that's what most people do now. Even back in the day when NASCAR was still good but getting shitty and people could see it, they just thought, eh, all right, whatever. They didn't really do anything about it. And, uh, you know, the, the longer BZF continues his uh, Hitler-like reign over NASCAR, it's, it's just going to get worse. And eventually it's just going to be so bad to the point where her, just people are just going to give up watching it. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, 
moving off of that, let's go to our next article, which just found on Jayski as well, uh, with uh, the issue with Nashville Super Speedway. A lot of people forgot Nashville, including uh, me until now. Uh, Nashville, um, yeah, there's a there's a there's something going on with the track. The, the closing deadline on the sale of Nashville Super Speedway in Wilson County by Dover Motorsports to Next Salvation Inc. has been extended to March 27th, according to recent filing. Next Salvation Inc. announced in May an agreement to purchase the racetrack from Dover and its subsidiary Nashville Speedway USA Incorporated for nearly 46 million dollars, 27 million dollars in cash, and the assumption of about 18 million in bond obligations owed to Wilson County. It's the fifth time that the closing has been extended. The most recent deadline had been set for February 25th. An excavation had already paid $1.7 million in non-refundable payments that will be set uh, for, for that will be supplied to the purchase price. The filing until we filed Friday with the Securities and Exchange Commission states that an excavation paid two hundred grand for the latest extension, which is non-refundable, but will not be applied toward the previous purchase. An excavation has now paid four hundred grand total for the last two deadlines extension that is not refundable and won't be refunded nor applied to the purchase price. So, I mean, this is the issue that I've been seeing a lot lately with these with these uh, racetracks that keep getting sold with the case with uh, Rockingham, uh, with that little issue. Now we have Nashville. I'm just wondering what's next on that little list. I'm thinking Nazareth could possibly be another uh, another track on that list that's going to have issues getting sold. I mean, the thing with Nazareth is I live like an hour away from Nazareth and I was only able to see the outside. It's the weeds are all grown up and uh, around it and they took all the grandstands away from there and there might be the silhouette of the track and things that you could see but overall that track has like been condemned and it's the same with like Rockingham. It's the same thing that's going to happen there. It's the same way the Wilkesboro started growing weeds and stuff. It's they the, uh, mismanagement and and uh, Bezia, or the Francis and the the Smith family, Bruton and Marcus and all of them have done everything in their power to make it a lit up and defeated two of them and tear the race and have suffered and it's a shame really but I figured the rock will go next unfortunately yeah, I mean, it sucks that all these great racetracks that provide a great race are just going under the under the under the ground, and nobody really seems to even ask about it anymore. I mean, that's that's kind of the case what happened with Riverside, which is my all-time favorite racetrack. But the reason with that is most people just figured Riverside was old and needed to be removed, and the guy who bought Riverside turned it into a goddamn mall and, and a, a housing track, and nobody even goes to that fucking mall anymore, which is which is a damn shame, really. I mean that's that's the product of today's NASCAR. They they used to actually give people chances, and the numbers and the stands, while they made a difference, weren't the the end all be all of what it is now. Because now you need to have a hundred thousand seats to hold a cup race, even though they're lucky to fill fifty. You know, like you, know, you should keep it in perspective. That's why Iowa should be on the on the cup schedule or and trucks twice and xfinity twice because that's a great racetrack but obviously they don't want to race a great racetrack to very other rather race a cookie cutter yeah well you know uh sooner the sooner we get helton in france out of out of office the sooner nascar can get back on its feet just Hopefully we'll find somebody who can actually run the goddamn thing and not take a shit on it like BZF has done for the past 12 years. Yeah, I agree. Well, well, another piece of business back onto the uh, driver issue between Bush, the Bush brothers. Now we're having another driver issue. On Ski, who will drive the 34 with the announcement that Reagan's going to be in the 18 this week? Another question that came to mind is who can it, who's going to be in the 34? Front Row Motorsports needed a replacement, but David Rudiman is kicking himself. The former Sprint Cup driver had the opportunity to race for Front Row Motorsports this weekend in the number 34 Ford at Atlanta Motor Speedway. However, Rudiman is traveling in California 
Virginia, told Motorsport.com on Tuesday that he had not renewed his NASCAR license for 2015. Rudiman says he hopes to return racing at some point. Renewing his NASCAR license and getting his license to go would be a good place to start. Bobby Labonte has been mentioned as a villain for David Reagan this weekend. Sources confirmed that the team has talked to 2000 champion with 48 entries for the Sprint Cup race at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Labonte's past two champions for Bridgman would come in handy. I mean, I'm one of the guys that would that would like to see Bobby in the 18, you know, give it kind of like a, a retro thing from the 90s to early 2000s. So, well, I wanted that to happen, but I knew it wasn't going to happen. So, if Labonte is in the 34, good on him. I mean, he's like one of the last few drivers of a dying breed that came into NASCAR hot-leaded, uh, did everything he could to, to become a great driver and did, won the championship in 2000. Won a lot of races. Basically put Joe Gibbs racing on the map, so we'll, we'll see how that goes on on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, with Bobby Labonte, if he gets the ride, I mean, he was limiting his schedule from basically full-time to four races. The uh, Whoever they have otherwise, I mean, it's, it's the... It's very hard to find drivers at this point when you've got so many sponsors and things committed to the sport in general, and they've got a name, they have to commit to the name, and once they've committed to that, for the sponsorship and everything, it's for the year. How are you going to go and turn around and make it, you know, Bubba Iguanas or some kind of guy like that, you know, like they yeah, I mean the people that they have, the the you're not going to get some of those young guys to drive a front row motorsports car. You're going to get a guy that's either out washed up or somebody in that office. So, I mean, I guess we'll find out Friday. We'll probably find out tomorrow or Thursday. Worst case. Yeah. Well, hopefully this week in Atlanta it'll actually be decent, but, you know, since it's on Fox, it'll, we'll probably have to put on some music to actually tone out the, the douchebags on Fox. I mean, the only one I can stand is Mike Joy. Yeah, I mean, Mike Joy has his moments for me, too, but it's it's a 500-mile race, so I won't be watching the whole way because it's 325 laps. It's like a four-hour race. I'll pass on watching it until a couple of passes over, really. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. Well, normally at this time, Elizabeth would announce the plugs, and I'm going to do so and take her place in this case. Um, if you want to get in touch with us, uh, the NASCAST people, uh, we have a, we now have a YouTube page, www.youtube.com slash NASCAST500. If you can't find it, then just type in NASCAST500 in the search bar, and you can find it. Uh, the first seven episodes of the show have been uploaded. More will be uploaded as soon as I can. Uh, if you want to find me on YouTube, my personal account, uh, www.youtube.com slash Sunday Night 1988. I post a lot of uh, 80s stuff and some NASCAR stuff all also, uh, if you want to get in touch with me on Facebook, www.facebook.com slash Adam Buzzman on the writer. Uh, I'm also, uh, if you want to take a look at the NASCAST group page that we have on Facebook, www.facebook.com slash groups slash NASCAST 500. And if uh, you want to join us, go right ahead. Uh, Bill, got anything? Yeah, um, I'm on Facebook, facebook.com slash Philip G. Matthew. I'm on Twitter at Philip G. Matthew. I usually tweet during the races and retweet things that I'm interested in, usually involving racing or hot chicks. Um, my the blog, the unfiltered blog with a P, is my name, full name, and the winner with Andre Miller finishing. You know, the, and, uh, yeah, so uh, Facebook, Twitter, the unfiltered blog, we're going to get some stuff going. Adam has already written a solid piece about young money, so key, stay tuned for that and stay tuned for my first piece. Also, a pro shout out to Stave Stock Car Racing uh, that with Chuck Ellison. His website, they're getting that one back up off the ground, and uh, we'll probably have multiple crusaders against what has become a generally vanilla, crappy sport. 
Um, uh, forgot to add, um, uh, if you want to get in touch with, uh, me on Twitter, although I don't go on there much, I'm at the Desert Bandit, uh, don't have any followers, but would appreciate, uh, someone to follow me, uh, if you also want to follow our NASCAST Twitter page, yeah, we got a Twitter, uh, at NASCAST500, and, uh, if you want to take a look at what we do, just go right ahead, and of course, we're not going to post anything that's going to be ass-kissing to Johnson or Kyle or anybody, BZF, and, uh, and Pukamania and oh Richard so oh, Richard. <laughs> can't, uh, can't go wrong there um, so for my buddy Phil for the missing Elizabeth who will probably be back next week uh, Madam Ham you guys have a good day hey guys it's Elizabeth this is NASCast 500 uh, this is my part of the episode Speedway's Cluster Fox I'm here with Adam hey Adam hey Elizabeth what's going on that's alright um I was not here for the episode because I have a second job, and because of the second job, I was unable to talk, contact Adam and Phil about doing the about doing the episode on Tuesday. So they did an episode uh, by themselves. So I got upset. I was like, you know, you could have told me. So it basically was all three of our faults. We take some of the blame. So I'm here. Adam's here. Phil, who knows. He's probably working or probably watching bowling. So, um, we'll just we'll just go. This is gonna be a quick episode, a uh, quick part, a quick whatever. I don't care. Who knows? Who cares anymore? Um, Daytona 500. It was an abomination. Uh, it was basically a hundred benefit. Gordon fucked hard. Most took to, uh took over the li- took over most of the lead. Um, I'll go down the list. Pizza face. Happy. Guntard. Paperboy, Fucktard, Casey Mears, Boye, Truex, Candy Cane, and Roy, uh, Bug Eye Dummy. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the Daytona 500 was probably not as big as it, it used to be. Uh, this year, I mean, the racing, the three wide racing was awesome, but the just the whole race in general was just a clusterfuck. I mean, the, the basically the race was dominated by HMS, uh, Gordon in his last 500. 87 laps and wrecked and finished 33rd, which sucks because I'm a Gordon fan. But most of the time it was Junior and Fixed Pack leading the way, and, and it was un, it was unbearable to watch the last 15, 20 laps because if that with the second to last caution had come out, that piece of shit probably would have won the race, and I would have gone ape shit. This would probably been like a 20 minute rant on this episode, but lucky for me he didn't. Um, as much as I don't like Joey Logano, I will say that I am. Happy that that Penske car won, and it wasn't Johnson. That's the two benefits of Logano winning. I it, and the thing that really pisses me off was the caution. The caution uh, on the last lap, right after the big one, it, 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 there was no need for it. Like they could have just let him race to the checkered, like they normally would back in the eighties, nineties, and early two thousand. But NASCAR, but Bill, Brian France was, oh, no, we should have thrown the caution anyway. That's what we're going to do in that situation. And I'm like, dude, are you fucking kidding me with that shit? I, I just, I don't understand. But um, but they hadn't thrown that caution. Harvick would have gotten around Logano and won that race, which would have been awesome. But, yeah, uh, like I said, the only two good parts about Logano winning was that it's a Penske car and it wasn't Johnson. Yeah. Um well, the uh, replacement for the Bush brothers, Regan Smith and uh, Matt Crafton, they did a p- pretty good job. I'm surprised. Uh, Regan Smith, uh, oh, by the way, he's a new dad. Congratulations. Uh, he finished 16th, and Matt Crafton, who's a uh, two time truck winner, he's finished 18th, which I gotta say, I thought they were gonna be in the, they're going to be in the low 30s, but you know, they surprised me. Yeah, they surprised me too. I mean, Smith isn't no, uh, isn't no uh, stranger to Daytona in, in Cup. He's been there plenty of times before. He's been there since uh, 2008, driving for DEI and then for Furniture Row and uh, then early uh, Phoenix Racing in 2013. He did pretty good that year. Uh, but I'm glad for Smith. You know, if, if there's anybody that could have replaced Kurt in the 41, it would have been Regan Smith. And, and Smith's one of those guys that you know is good, that could be back in Cup and run full-time for a Cup championship, but he's more focused on uh, the Xfinity championship, which isn't that bad of, of a deal when you look at it. Now that the only people he really has to fight for the title is uh, Chase Elliott and a couple others, not really much. So um, I'm still picking Regan Smith to win the Xfinity championship this year. And uh, 
And Crafton, I was surprised they picked Crafton. I thought they were going to pick Jones, Eric Jones, to be in the A team, which I would have loved to have seen. But uh, they don't want, want a rookie replacing a veteran at Daytona, and, and Eric and Jones has never had a Cup start, so I, I can understand that. But um, I'm happy for Crafton and, and Smith. They really proved that, you know, even though they race in, in different series, so Crafton races in the trucks as a two-time truck series championship champion. Uh, Smith races in Xfinity, so. To see them in Cup and replacing two big names, both brothers, it was it was pretty cool to see. And glad that they finished ahead of uh, uh, of some of the people that we can't stand, including uh, Oh Richard. Yes, Richard. <laughs> Woo um, and poor Tony. <laughs> He's he had an accident within lap seventy two, and he and was out of the race and uh, basically ruined Phil's not Phil's day. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of did the same thing for me. I was I was just like, how many more chances is Tony Stewart really going to get to win the Daytona 500? I mean, now he's over 17. This was the 17th start, and 17 was a lucky number for Jaws when he won the tie, when he won the 589. But that's out of the question. That was kind of a kind of a sentimental win and a kind of it, to me it, it was kind of a rigged win. But that's beside the point. Uh, it sucks for Stewart. I'm a big Stewart fan, and to see him wreck early was uh, was pretty shitty. I mean, uh, and, and the fact that it took an, uh, another half a half a lap to, to throw the caution was just in fucking in, in, insane. It's just I can't believe that they took that long to throw the caution out. I mean, that's just that just shows how uh, how much NASCAR really doesn't care if one of the uh, prime favorites to win the 500 wrecks, and then they have to wait a little bit to throw the caution. I mean, it's not like. You know, Stewart had a good chance. I mean, he had a great car all weekend. He did good in the shootout till he wrecked with Kurt and his Kurt's last technical NASCAR start before the duels. Um, and, and it just sucks. So I, I see. I say Tony has another two more shots to win the 500. But if he doesn't get it done next year or in 2017, then Stewart's just gonna just say fuck it. Okay, uh, Kurt Busch, his appeals were denied. Uh, fuck you, Brian France. So what? I mean, I just don't understand how why NASCAR let Kirk get suspended and let Alabama man Travis Quapple stay in NASCAR and only gave him probation. And they had actual evidence to to support the claims for Quapple. They actually had the testimony of his wife and Quapple himself even admitted it. But even in this article that I posted in the in the group this morning that uh, says. Uh, Kurt Busch suspended for an alleged, the, the key word here is alleged, alleged domestic violence something. And I said, well, see what I'm saying? They'll, they'll suspend Kurt Busch for an alleged domestic violence, but they'll, they'll keep Travis Quapple for actually beating the shit out of his wife and admitting it and all they give him is probation. That's just hip hypocrisy. All and, right, and, I have to play, I, since I, you mentioned his name, I have to play the video. Uh, it's. We all know this is our this is one of my favorite episodes of South Park. I gotta play it. Okay. Okay, why is it not? They cut off the part that says not all wife beaters are from Alabama. I, I love that part. I love that episode of South Park. It's like one of my favorites. Uh, but um, you know the highlight of the uh, Daytona 500 ring was the Norwals commercial. <laughs> Ugh, I fucking hate the Norwalls commercial. I, I was about ready to shoot myself because they were playing it so much. I was like, okay, we get it. And they're We're actually an actual an animal. animal. He, they, do, they do exist. Ugh. Oh, God. Now it makes me... Oh, God, I really wish they did. All right. We'll just go to the Xfinity race. Uh, Ryan Reed, Busher, uh, Busher Dylan, uh, Dylan Douchebag number two, Dylan Douchebag number one. Uh, Brad, David Starr, Alec Alamola, Ar Alec Alamola, Kyle Larson, Rosh Shastain, and Goontard. 
Good. Let the special. Yay. Let the special needs win. The special needs driver <laughs> win. Yay. Which, by the way, I, diabetes is considered special needs, so we're not making well, fun of anybody with diabetes. <laughs> well, in any event, I'm glad a first-time winner was uh, was the story of two uh, races this weekend with a truck race on Friday night with Tyler Reddick for Brad, and then on Saturday with uh, Ryan Reed for uh, Roush. And it was Roush's first win at Daytona in that series, which is hard to believe, but... Uh, you know, I was really hoping the first-time winner would finally come out in the ranks because usually it would just—it's just dominated by Cup drivers, which probably would have been the case had that uh, caution came out when everybody wrecked on the last lap. But NASCAR decided to let them race to the, to the checkered like they should have done on Sunday. But of course, they had to ruin the what was already a shitty Daytona 500. And um, if they had thrown the caution when they when they wrecked, Brad probably would have won, and it would have been a shitty finish. But they didn't read past him on the last corner. I think it was either turn three or turn four when he passed him, and, and it was awesome to see a first-time winner. And, and, and I've always liked Ryan Reed. I think he's a cool kid. And not to mention, he's from my uh, my state. He's from California. He's from Bakersfield, where uh, Kevin Harvick and Casey Mears are from. And my uncle and aunt live in uh, Bakersfield. So it, it was cool for me to see a California, California kid get the job done on Saturday. Yeah, I think what... Now there was a there was a wreck on uh, fifty laps uh, to go. Poor Kyle Busch. Although we're not fans of his, we got we got to admit we felt bad seeing his leg like bent. So uh, we want to wish him we want to wish him well. He's going to be out for five to six months. Um, Reg, uh, David Reagan is going to be driving for him in Atlanta, which. By the way, why couldn't have somebody else drive for him since Dave Reagan's wrote drives for front worm motorsports? Yeah, I don't get that. Well, the the issue with uh, with Kyle, it, it was um, you know everyone knows who has been my friend on Facebook for years know that I think Kyle Busch is a douchebag and that he's a uh, he's cocky and he's aggressive and that he's and he and he is the king of the miners, as Bill would say. But besides that. There, I, I don't like to see drivers injured or hurt. That's the one credo of me is that regardless of how much I hate a driver, I don't really care. I don't wish death on or injury on them. The same goes for fixed pack. Although I loathe that piece of shit, I, I don't want to see him killed or, or hurt. But uh, in any event, uh, it was pretty, it, you know, the way Kyle hit it was pretty hard. I mean, he hit it at going at least 95, 100 miles an hour where there's no safer barrier. That's and why we all should need safer barriers at the racetracks. Because yep. Brian France is a douchebag and doesn't want to spend money. He wants another death so he can get more publicity. Exactly. And, you know, me and Phil were talking about it the other day. And he basically said it took it took a wreck for Kyle Busch getting injured for NASCAR to wake up and say, oh, now we have to add safer barriers. The whole point of the safer barriers is to prevent what happened in 2001 to Dale Sr. But, of course, they're not doing that. They only put safer barriers in certain parts of the track. Now they're finally putting safer barriers around all the tracks. And and they said as soon as the 500 was over, they're going to put safer barriers in there. And then I read on Jay Ski, they're doing the same thing at Talladega and, they, and uh, I think Kentucky, and they're going to do it at. But they need to do it at all fucking tracks because even though Kyle Busch is a, is a, is a dickhead, I don't want to see him killed. I mean, that's if anybody wants to see him killed, they, they just need to fucking... They're, they're, they're pieces of shit. I mean, But like, I, am, I will say this, I'm glad Eric Jones is not going to be driving the 18 because he's not ready for cup. No, he's not. I mean, as much as I would like to see Eric Jones do good and, and, and get a little step closer in his, in his NASCAR career, that's the not the way to go. That's what they did to Joey Logano early for what Joe Gibbs did and put him in the 20 car a little too early, and he wasn't even in a full-time nationwide uh, season yet. So they should have waited to let him get in there. But, uh, you know, it, it's it's also what Phil said the other day, that uh, he's, he's living up to his nickname as the best thing since sliced bread, but it took him to leave Gibbs to do so. But, uh, yeah, Jones needs to stay in trucks full-time, race Xfinity, whenever, and then maybe in a few years run some cup races, and then the next year after that get ready for cup. But uh, um, although I can't stand him, I um, hope he recovers well and, and that uh, he, he comes back I think soon. he's going to get the same surgery as Tony did when he had his accident. That's, act, that's exactly what happened, and he actually had the same kind of injuries that Tony did at, on the same leg. Stewart broke his right leg, and it was a compound fracture, and Kyle had the same injury. So, And, and a lot of people think that also when Kyle comes back, it's going to be kind of what happened with Stewart when he came back. It took him 
forever to get reacquainted with with himself in a race car. So when Kyle comes back, he, he might not be back at full speed. He might not be winning every race like he did in Xfinity almost last year. So in any event, I hope Kyle gets better and uh, hope that he recovers well. All right. Uh now I'm hearing, uh, I'm just reading that Joe Mianchek is going to be driving David Reagan's uh, ride. Yep, he's going to be... Uh, God damn it, ask her. Stop confusing me. I'm already confused yeah. as it is. I honestly, th honestly thought Bobby the Bonnie was going to be in the 18 at Atlanta this weekend, which would have been awesome. It, it they should have put okay. Mianchek in the 18. Oh my God, that would have been a wreck fest. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is with the, with the whole Gibbs thing is that they could have had better drivers to pick, but they were they were had slim pickings because. But, they, besides, but the, here's the thing, front, he's, David Reagan's already signed the front row motorsports. Why yeah. have why take somebody from a well established team and place it with another well established team? Well, I mean, with with Reagan, it's a step up, and you know, Reagan R Reagan's career at Front Row was kind of sketchy in the beginning of this year. A lot of people believe he wasn't even going to be back in the thirty four this year, and Cole Witt was going to take over. But then they finally announced, like uh, literally a month before the shootout, he was going to be in the thirty four. Uh, I'm honestly glad for Reagan, but I really don't. It's kind of weird to see him in the eighteen with Kyle Sue. They could have picked someone better. I would have said David Rudiman, but David Rudiman's like, I'm not doing this. I don't have any not license nor physical. I'm not. not. Not to mention he's in California right now, so he he hasn't really gotten to it. But he, it, would, it would be cool. He still she's still pissed off of what a uh, uh, queer guy did to him. Oh yeah, Walter destroyed his NASCAR career. I mean, oh, he yeah, went from. Walter, he, besides, Walter did a whole. It, it just sucked. Uh, yeah. Sunday. Yeah, not to mention. Yeah, well, that's Michael Bottrop. I mean, he 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 boasts about, oh man, I'm gonna go out there and race, restrict the plate, and then it's like Bottrop, dude, you suck. You you your two day Toronto 500 wins plus that magical win at Talladega in 03 was lucky. So you haven't really proved much. So yeah, uh, he I needs to just hang up the helmet and just and just do whatever. Is he gonna he be does. driving in Atlanta? In Atlanta? Like I got. Nope. I'll check. I'll check that. No, he's not. Uh, Moffat's gonna be in the 55 this oh. week, and then Vickers is coming back next week in Las Vegas. Oh, good. I can't stand. I can't stand. All right, uh, I can't really imagine anybody who can stand that douchebag. Um. Okay. We'll just go down the list. With, uh, Camping World. Uh, Reddick, Jones, Legacy, Thorl, Black, Gillian, Salius, Crafton, Suarez. I hate that guy. And Sauter. I mean, I'm I'm happy that uh, that Reddick won. I kind of figured near the end it was going to be a BKR benefit, which is good because I, I love Brad's my boy. He's my number one next to Gordon, and to see his trucks finish first and fourth, it was good. I honestly thought it was going to be a, a BKR one too, but to see Reddick win in the most surprising of ways, it was cool. Uh, I thought Terry Oak was going to be there in the thick of things at the end, but he got shuffled late, and, and Jones got him in the last uh, last corner before they hit the, the uh, start finish line. So, good on him. I'm glad he finished good, and Jones proving that uh, he, he he's the real deal. I mean, a lot of people have talked about who's going to be the next Jeff Gordon, and I don't think anybody is going to be in that kind of talk, but if you're going to get close to that point, I say the, the, you're looking at the future when you look at uh, Kyle Larson, Ryan Blaney, Chris Buescher, and and now with uh, Tyler Reddick. So it's, it's going to be a fun next couple of years, along with Chase Elliott. I'm, su oh, I'm surprised uh, Norm Benning got to the top 20. He usually doesn't do that good. Yeah, well, with Benning, that's just his forte. I mean, he, t he tends to just ride in the back and finish in the back because he's just – I mean, he hasn't really had that good of a finish, but it was also surprising that he missed that uh, that big wreck that took out a whole bunch of guys. Timothy Peters involved. It's all John Rex Townley's fault. Yep. See, that's and that's another reason. I, uh, and while we were recording our uh, special Kurt Busch episode last week, was when the wreck was occurring, and I watched it, and I and I had to refrain from saying "oh shit" while we were talking about the issues at hand with Kurt. Uh, but yeah, John West Townley just needs to get the fuck out of NASCAR. He's 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 a shitty driver. He can't do anything to save his life, and he I don't know why people still put him in trucks slash cars. I mean, there's just no, really no point. I mean, I know he's he's got sponsorship because of his daddy, but you know it, it's kind of the Paul, kind of like Paul Menard, but Paul Menard has at least, has at least some talent. That John Lewis Stanley has nothing. All right. <clears throat> let me just okay. So okay, let me just go to my let me just go to JC because the NASCAR website's not loading up for me. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Pro, uh, pros of Mac, folks. Pros of having a Mac. Yeah, I'm already on JC right now. Yeah, I'm trying to... Um, Well, oh, Quapel's going to be in the 44, the team that uh, Sorensen was in the 500 yeah. with. Yeah. Fucking blind beard. Still, I just don't understand how he can get a cup ride and, and Kurt's on his ass. It's just fucking NASCAR. There's like some African website just wrote about like Kurt Busch suspended for beating up, beating his wife. Like, okay, that's, go, Africa, you're stupid. Well, I mean that's that that's just typical media. They they like to just <coughs> they look like they support NASCAR's decision because well, Afri they're trying Africa doesn't even get NASCAR. I don't get yeah it. Not, yeah. Not to mention they don't even have racing there at all. So I don't know why the yeah fuck they're, they're basically that. like being like like Bob Geldof just goes over there and per gets the, begs people to give them money while he goes to, like go back to a hill, hill, hill and fucking yeah. Bob Geldof with passion. All right, we're in Atlanta. Um, I checked the weather forecast. Jesus Christ, it's going to be in the 40s. Global yeah. warming there, folks. Uh, yeah, I got a friend of mine who's in Georgia right now. He's in uh, August of Georgia, or Augusta, or however the fuck you spell it. And, and, it's, and he says it's pretty fucking cold over there. Oh, but, oh. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's kind of cool to see them racing at Atlanta this early in the year. I mean, the last time they raced at Atlanta this time of year was in 2010. And they ran the spring race in March of 2010, which my boy Kurt won, which is his last, one of his last wins in the Blue Deuce. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna see what NAS what they'll do, how different it's gonna be racing in the daytime again versus running at night, which they've been doing since 2009. So it's, it's gonna be cool to see. All right, um, I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm going pick pick. I'm gonna say Tony Stewart's gonna win, and my dark horse is going to be probably Menard. Yeah, me, I, I got uh, two picks that I think they're, well, technically two picks and then a dark horse. Uh, my first pick to win on uh, Sunday, yeah, I'm going to say Harvick. Harvick is going to win. He's going to get his first win of the 2014 season. And then the other guy I think that could possibly have a good shot at winning is Kenseth. He needs a win. He hasn't won in nearly two years. So um, picking Kenseth, my dark horse, my guess could be a tie between Newman and maybe Smith. Maybe Smith can go out there and surprise. Who knows? Yeah, but uh, yeah, but he he won't he'll make the All Star race, but not the Chase. Yeah, because he's running for X, the Xfinity Championship, so his points don't count. All right, so I'm on Xfinity, the Xfinity. List. Okay, so I'm gonna have to say Logano is gonna be a sprint car benefit. Uh, Chase Elliott's gonna win the Atlanta. Uh, gonna win. Uh, I'm gonna say either Wallace. Or Smith's going to be my dark horse. Uh, well, usually when you go to Atlanta, it tends to be a, a cup benefit most of the time. I'm checking the list right now. Um, Eric Jones uh, will be driving the uh, 54. Yeah, well, that's I'm, I'm glad for Jones. It's a, it's a step up from racing the 20 because the 20 is kind of out there. But racing in the fastest car that everyone looks at every week when Kyle was in it. So to see him in the 54, it's cool. Uh, it's kind of be the same thing with me, two, two, reg two picks in a dark horse. Uh, when it comes to a cup driver, I'm going to say, let's see, who's on the 22? Logano. Um, I'm going to say it's going to be a, sh a tie between Larson and Logano. And when we're talking about Xfinity, I'm going to say Brian Scott. And as a uh, dark horse, I'm going to say, let's see, who, who else is racing, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Morgan Shepard's still racing, good Christ. Uh, I'm, gonna I'm say surprised Chris he didn't qualify. I'm surprised he didn't uh, try to enter for the Daytona 500. Uh, God, if he, if he entered the 500, uh, probably Clint Boyer would have gone on, gone on his ass, too. Uh, so my second uh, pick, the dark horse, uh, Chris Buescher. Okay, um, for the trucks? Hmm. 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 This is difficult. Um, I'm gonna say Johnny Sauter for the, he's gonna win, and then uh, my and then I'm gonna take my dark horse and be uh, Tyler Reddick. <coughs> okay, so let's see. We got okay. Well, I'm gonna pick two people this time, and it's not there's gonna be one pick and a dark horse. Uh, I'm gonna say Timothy Peters wins, and then the dark horse is gonna be. Mm, maybe James Busher. Wait, he doesn't even have a sponsor. Holy shit, that sucks. 
Well, uh, the sponsors are hard to get by these days. Yeah, not to mention that uh, Turner Scott's closed down, so he's so Bush was kind of tied on sponsorship. You know right what's sad? Ron Hornaday didn't make the five hundred, but yet uh, Mike's Mike's uh, Wallace did. Mike well, fucking Wallace. Well, well, Mike Wallace made the field because he's running a more uh, cup races in the last 13 years than Hornaday's did. Hornaday hasn't even made a 500 start since 2002, I think. So, And, Horn and Hornaday's really been focusing more on trucks than running Xfinity or, or Cup. So it, it is kind of hard to get back in a saddle, which you haven't raced in, in a long time. The, the, the cars have changed. The, the, the rules have changed. So not really surprising. I mean, uh, it sucks that Hornaday didn't make the field, but, you know, in, in a way, I'm not really surprised. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, by the way, did you see, uh, I don't know if you saw it, but uh, there was llamas escape from some uh, truck this morning. Apparently. Yeah, one of my friends posted it on her Facebook because she's, she, she's from Arizona, and I guess it was in Arizona, and she's like, this is my state. I'm like, good fucking Christ. That was funny. I just really hope they don't make a commercial into that and then post it on race day every fucking day. Oh, I like Jeez. Yeah, those are normal wall commercials that piss me off. In fact, Jermaine Racing, uh, who follows us, which you all should follow us, NASCAST500 on Twitter, they're, just like, they're like, oh, no, the normal walls are awesome. And I'm tweeting them back. They're fucking annoying. Surprisingly, they didn't unfollow us yet. Yeah, that being the keyword, yeah. I mean, those Norwalk commercials drove me fucking insane. I think it was by, I think they started posting it on Saturday, the day of the shootout, and since then it's just been like bullet, it's like bullet therapy. That's the only way that I can get through that. It's just so bad. Okay, um, well, let's just go, <clears throat> I'm starting to lose my voice for some reason. All right, um, follow us at NASCAST500. Follow me at Elizabeth Moxley. Follow him at the Desert Bandit. Uh, f go to our YouTube page and and f mm -hmm. go search NASCAR 500. Where Adam's doing a great job uploading our our episodes. Uh, Geeks and Industry uh, .com. Uh, We're on iTunes, Stitcher, Feedburner, blah blah blah. Just. Take good care Or she will scream